وصلنا لحر تقسيمة البروغرام في نسر التأوم الانتربرندي تريتشي جوليا داي So my grandfather um, came with his family. They, uh, he was quite a small boy when he migrated, so he was um, he was only seven years old when he came over. Quite young. And came with his family, um, and so um, yeah, so he he grew up um, in Australia. And um, my mother, um, he then married an, uh, an Irish woman. So my, my um, mother's background was not so much. I think they probably just had a fairly typical Melbourneian upbringing. There wasn't a huge Maltese influence. Yeah. I was going to ask you, was there any Maltese influence? influence in your life at all but having your grandfather come out mm, so young in yes. life there's hardly any influence whatsoever. No not so much and he died very young actually he died before I was just before I was born so um, unfortunately I never got to meet him and I never got to um, to understand some of the um, some of the experiences that, that he had as he was growing as he was growing up but my um, some of my my mother's brothers my mother came from a very large family she's got um, six brothers so some uh, some of them are very interested in the Maltese history and have, have done a lot of research and they've, they've been starting to um, you know have a look at some you know typical Maltese cuisine and yeah. um, and look at his story and so I've probably learnt a lot more from them than I did in the early days. But yeah. you have been to Malta. I have been to Malta yeah. yes so I um, I went with my mother it was about 20 years ago before I had children um, we were going to um, visit some family in Ireland and we decided to take a, a side trip to Malta and and and, um, and and meet up with some family and um, and have a bit of a look at, 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 at a Essentially, where we came from, and and, and the, you know the, the the church where my my grandfather was christened, and yeah, yeah, so that was yeah that was fantastic. Having now this background in baking and and decorating cookies, um, did you have any opportunities to try multi sweets and and sort of get um, get familiarised with? Maltese sweets at no, all? Really, no, really, my understanding of Maltese sweets has been come about since I started decorating cookies. A lot of, um, I've had a lot of um, Maltese customers who've come in uh -huh. and um, a lot of people come to learn my classes because they're making fagoli. Of course. And so I've learned so much from them about the fagoli and about how, because they're wanting to decorate fagoli yeah. and they want them to look beautiful. Um, and so, um, so that I, I think that's probably, I've learned more from my customers than I have sort of from my own history. Right. Yeah. And have you started making fagoli yourself now? No, I haven't. I've <laughs> I tasted it and I love it, but I don't dare make it because it's it's so good. But because I have a lot of my customers who give me some fagoli, and yeah. it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, so I, I haven't tried making it myself. Yeah. Now let's come down to Miss Biscuit. How did Miss Biscuit come about? So, well, I'm actually a speech pathologist by trade. I'm not actually a spe uh, I'm not actually a baker. Um, but one day I discovered royal icing cookies, and um, someone gave me a few cookie cutters. And I've always loved to bake, and I've always loved, I've always been you know quite creative. Um, so one day, yeah, I, look, I, I started looking at at royal icing cookies um, online, and and got instantly hooked because the, you didn't actually see a lot of royal icing cookies in Australia at that time. Um, they weren't very popular. No one really was making them. So. I, um, I started making them and I um, started sort of, I registered my home kitchen and started selling cookies from my home kitchen. People were putting in orders and then before you know it, you, you knew it, people were asking me for classes because I was, um, I was developing a bit of a profile for, for cookies in Australia and, um, and yeah, and then the, the classes just developed at home and it just sort of grew from there. Classes at home got a bit crazy because I was sort of <laughs> kicking my family out every weekend so that I could run classes at home and we had a permanent shop set up in the lounge room and boxes down the hallway so um, so we had to do something so yeah and I came across this building and um, and rang my husband and said that's it we, we're gonna open a cookie shop and, and, and we did. Miss Biscuit was born. <laughs> yes absolutely. <laughs> now just looking at these cookies it's just it's an art really I mean I wouldn't be able to do this mm. so myself looking at these cookies I go I can't do that can us mortal people do this? Absolutely do <laughs> yes you can and that's, that's what our classes are all about it's about showing people how easy it is mm -hmm. to be able to create something like that. This, these ones are probably a little bit more complicated but these these ones here are, are very very straightforward and this is what we do in our beginners class and everybody walks away with cookies looking like that. How do you come up with the designs? Um, look I, I get my designs and my inspiration from lots of different places. I tend to see 
um, the world in cookies. So every time I, I look at something, I might look at a greeting card and think, oh, that would make a gorgeous cookie. I might look at a um, some wallpaper and think that's an incredible design, and, and I, I think that would make a you know a gorgeous cookie. So yeah, so I, you're I, inspired by. I'm inspired by so much around me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, what about the classes? There's obviously beginners classes for sure. So yes. tell us more about the classes and what you offer in the classes. Yeah. So well, the beginners class is by far our most popular. We have people travelling really because we're the only um, studio like it in Australia. We have people travelling all around Australia. And we have people travelling from um, from Asia as well to come to our classes. Um, so we, we, yeah, look, it's, it's by far our most popular. It's a five-hour class and we teach everything you need mm -hmm. to know in order to be able to create that, that plate of cookies, basically. We give you all our recipes. We um, we make the icing. We show you how to bake the perfect cookie. We, we show how to to um, colour your icing and how to pipe and, and yeah, how to... And we also go into lots of things like storage and shelf mm -hmm. life. We have lots of people coming who... Um, run home businesses and they want to add cookies maybe to their cake business at home um, so they come along because we give lots of information that's really useful for business small business as well. Uh, speaking yeah. about baking what's the secret to bake um a really good cookie. Ah, oh, it's about <laughs> having a really good recipe. Mm. Absolutely, you you need the it's thing. All in the, the recipe. Abs, it is all in the mm. recipe because um, you you when you're creating a design, um, you want your cookie to be the shape of the cookie cutter. Yeah. You don't want it to spread at all, and you want your cookie to be looking perfect. So um, you do have to make sure that you have a really good base recipe, and that's what we give in our classes. It's so that. Yeah, you, your, when you bake your cookies, they will come out looking like that. And the yeah. secret for icing cookies? The secret for icing, well, uh, the secret for icing is all about your icing consistency. So when you make your icing, you need to make a number of different consistencies mm -hmm. in order to be able to then pipe it and put it on the cookie. And that's the key to it. It's about knowing and understanding those consistencies, which is what we go through in the class. Yeah. You mentioned the shell life before. How yeah. long would an ice cookie last for? Um, look, they, they're actually, they're an incredible product because they do actually have um, quite a long shelf life. Mm -hmm. they, um, they look we um, we tend to find that they last for around two to three months wow. so and that's that without there's no preservatives or anything wow. yeah so the the, 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 um, the sugar in them really preserves them um, and so as long as you seal them properly mm -hmm. and store them properly um, then you will get you know, generally at least two to three months out of them sometimes if you've got a, you know a base such as a gingerbread base um, or a chocolate base you can even get four to five months out of them They're that's quite great because if you've got an event coming up yeah, a party or whatever absolutely. you can pre, pre prepare them yeah. well in advance oh, for sure and they and you can also freeze them so you can freeze them fully decorated which means you can make your Christmas cookies back in July Wow and then pull them out at Christmas time and then yeah. just defrost them and then that's just it. defrost them yeah. Wow well, program Horta Maltese down under and I need to catch in a moment and come like you have to show to battle in a comment you also jeremy a battle in a email for maltese tv at gmail.com you in kella i'm looking at that man for the passion at anna for facebook maltese down under in a my lineage to come a saha not to come up on time and to horal palum jima this is him